You send your emails are extraordinary uh, for the record. I want to note to our assembled crowd just how responsive you are. Um, the notion that we should, I still don't know why we're increasing the authority to spend beyond what we're going to levy when the idea of an unexpected windfall of property taxes seems rather fanciful. But let me. And I'm going to finish my question. And if we, nothing stops us from receiving that money if we get a windfall of property taxes. If somebody wants to give us $20 million in their estate, nothing stops us from taking it. The only thing that this would allow us to do is to spend it in addition to the budget that, uh, you know, we, we passed last month. So I appreciate that 10% is less than 40%, which is less than 50%. But to me, I think if our budget is what it is last month, then our budget ordinance ought to be what we intend to spend. And if we get more money, we can figure out if we want to spend it next year or if we want to reduce taxes or send the money back to taxpayers or whatever we want to do. This does not say that we're going to spend I that. understand as an author. I 100% understand this is an authorization to spend. I totally get that. I don't know why we would authorize staff to spend more than what we budgeted. Let me try to answer that. Thank you. We had, several years ago, it was not a tax windfall. We received a bequest for nearly $300,000. Some legal opinions are that if you haven't authorized it, you can't receive it. Now, that's a matter for the attorneys to debate. But since we had authorized it, we had no difficulty receiving it. You never know when such a bequest is going to occur because it's typically related to or connected to the death of a patron. In that particular case, the money was received with the express intent that it focus on one program that we develop, armchair travelers. But there have been other bequests we've received over the years that have either been general or that have been targeted to other things. What the authorization does is it allows us to handle that in whatever is the best and most appropriate way for us to use those monies, invest those monies, you know, put them to work in whatever way is beneficial to the library. But we couldn't have anticipated that those monies would be available to us prior at the time that we passed the budget because you don't receive an advance notice of the possibility of a bequest. That information isn't disclosed until after the person dies. I get all that. I, let me just clarify. Can I just have one more thing? Yes, of course. And historically, just in terms of what's happened with the board, and maybe this is where there's a misunderstanding that you're having, the appropriation that we're talking about now, all it's doing is it's giving us the room to possibly spend money if it's there, which as Ron said, may be there, may not be there, but it's not, it's the staff can't go ahead and spend money without coming to the board and, and asking for our permission to do so. So it's not like, it's not like all of a sudden there's, there's another $100,000 that, that, and that someone's gonna go ahead and spend it. They can't, that by, by rules that are in place, by policy that's in place, that cannot happen. Because we've already passed the budget. And we already the have was passed. And there's also limits on what, what anybody at the library can expend without getting an approval from the board. So two questions. So thank you. First was, uh, I didn't hear anything that anything prohibits us from receiving any amount of money. I, I don't recall hearing that from the attorney. Is that your opinion, Anthony, that we need, that there's anything we need to do to accept any amount of bequest that falls on our lap? There could be contingencies attached to a donation. That's, it, if that's, it's, it must be spent this fiscal year. Right. Aside from that, is there any restriction on us taking a big bequest and spending it later? I, I, I guess you know it would depend upon what the terms of that bequest were. Right. So that it seems super unlikely. But so I appreciate that somebody may want to give us twenty million dollars, right? And we are not in a position to accept that right now. 
because we don't have a $20 million, all right, we're not, we're not anticipating doing that. So I think in the event of a bequest, I think there's lots of ways to skin that cat without authorizing spending, which is 10% higher than, you know, what we intend to budget. To your point, Stuart, I appreciate that it doesn't allow staff to go nilly-willy, and every month they've got to ask the board for permission to approve uh, the bills and salaries. But and it's, what, and what? it's never green. It's, and no one, nobody in, in my time on the board, yeah. there's never been a time where the library has had a surplus of money and gone, oh, we have a surplus, let's go spend it. It's just never, that's never been the way. It doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. No, it's, I, it's, I, yeah. I, and I don't mean to suggest that no, that's, that's what, what staff would That's do. what your wording, that's what you just said sounded to me like. It's like, like if you go on vacation and you think it's going to cost you and your family of five people Five thousand dollars to go on a vacation to Disney World. Are you going to only bring five thousand dollars with you, or maybe you'll bring an extra five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, so that by by some chance, if there's an extra item or souvenir, or or it rains and you got to do something other than be in the theme park, you might want to have that money there to as a as a cushion for for additional options. I I just don't see, given that we've been coming in under budget consistently for years, I don't I don't see any value in sort of up in the authority to spend. To me, that's just not, I, I don't see any value in it. Um, and it, to me, I like that we're separating the two because there's certainly more clarity that way, and I appreciate that. But to me, I think the idea of an extra contingency, sort of just because, and upping every line item by 10% just because, I, that doesn't strike me as. Um, I, I don't. I hear what you're saying, Dan. Right. But the reverse of that argument yeah, is, yeah. why not have the flexibility in case it, we're, we're helping the library, we're giving the library more potential to do something by creating the oppor the option if the opportunity arises. And if we don't have a 10% or higher cushion, and we're only talking 10% again, not 50%, as, sure. or as Anthony had cited, we're being we're being very practical about this. It just gives us the opportunity, if the uh, gives us the the ability, if the opportunity arises, to do something versus. To completely cross that op that option off by not having that 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 cushion, why 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 limit the library in, in its ability to do something additional for the community if the opportunity arises? Well, as I understand and it, it doesn't yeah. limit the library staff. It just unfortunately maybe adds a maybe a, another step to come and approach the board to spend something. Which happens anyway. Like if there's if some which over, happens anyway. Right, so it may not yeah, it yeah. may not be an additional burden. I it, mean, it may not be an additional burden if we. If right. we don't allow an appropriation, I'm just kind of, I want to add to the discussion here because it sounds like, you know, maybe a, the 10% could be, it could be discussed further. It sounds like, and I don't know if Ms. Fishman or Ms. Barshas have ever had, I guess Ms. Fishman wasn't here during the last appropriation approval. Um, has Ms. Barshas ever... Yes, for ever. The last six years, I think. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. and have and the trustees, I'm sure that were here before me. Have we always just uh, given approval for the flat or for a rate for the, I guess, recommended rate to the board? Yes, because from we, the staff. Because as I said, we're not we're not we're not telling the library or the staff to spend the money. Sure. We're just giving ourselves the ability to do so. We're creating the the and option again, and versus taking an option away. So and if we hadn't given them, them the option in the past years, we would have gotten requests from the staff to spend a certain amount, correct? No, or to no, overspend that's, a that's, certain amount. This is not, the budget is what the, the budget is. The appropriation is what so I mean, yeah. Yeah, no. the appropriation gives us the ability to take money, but it's not saying that we're going to spend that money. I, right. I understand that. And has, and we've, has it's, never been one, it's never been used that way to just no, no one's ever come to us and said, oh, you, there's a 10%, you've got, you know, there's never, no one's ever used the appropriation to justify spending more than the than the existing budget. Sure. Have we had a case where we've, In my um, where we've, I guess, had to use the ability, have, have we had an instance where the appropriation was, um, well, came into play? Yes, Ron, 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 yes. Ron Trustee Rogers had just mentioned that a few minutes ago. Well, for example, the, we did not budget to spend money making a very large repair uh, to prevent water flowing through the electrical vault downstairs. I guess so, Mr. In addition, we didn't budget anything for the possibility of patrons driving their vehicles into the building. Sure. So we in, didn't budget for case, the Doug bollards that were installed after those incidents to protect staff and patrons 
from vehicles being driven sure. into the building. Those all were expenditures that we were able to afford and had the authority to spend because we'd appropriated with the possibility that unknown contingencies could be responded to. Now, the other factor is if we had a flood that damaged a portion of the library or a fire or some other issue, yes, there'd be insurance coverage in the long term, but in the short term, we'd have to make repairs and deal with issues and expenses that the authorization allows us authority to address at the time that it needs to be fixed. If we get later reimbursement through insurance coverage, that's terrific. That's why we have insurance. But insurance never pays ahead of when you make the repair costs. And if you delay the repair until you receive the insurance check, then you're going you're gonna to create hardships for staff and patrons that are totally unnecessary if you have the extra appropriation authority to allow you to respond to those situations in a more timely manner. That's really what the extra appropriations are for, is to address those contingencies or situations that are unexpected, that naturally do occur, and that you know, we, we can't respond to if we haven't given authority to make those expenditures if they're needed. We don't use the appropriation as a wish list. It's never been used that way. It's used to provide for the possibility if something unexpected occurs that, that requires something we couldn't anticipate at the time of the budgeting. Mm -hmm. Over the last several years, you know, storms have gotten more intensified in the area. This is a perfect example. And let's say there was some kind of damage done to the library, and there was some kind of library programming going on, and we couldn't do it at the library, but we could go rent a space nearby, whether it was a business or someplace else. That's the kind of thing where we'd have, again, insurance may or may not pay for that down the line. But in the meantime, we would still be able to keep the functioning and the, and the offerings of the library going by having the, the fe financial flexibility to, to, again, rent another space that would mm -hmm. that would cover for what we lost here. I mean, so, so, so I guess it's I think it'd be, yeah. it, it's more of a, almost a timing ability as well. I mean, I'm understanding that there's a flexibility to be able to spend, and it's more of a timing than to spend that, because otherwise it sounds like, timing, well, the staff would have to, if we don't approve this and then we have some type of contingent event and uh, an expense, um, and we let's say that it exceeds this 10 percent and let's say let's say we don't approve this 10 percent or we don't I guess go ahead it exceeds it then we'd have to have some type of special meeting to approve some type of contingency expense and where it would come from whether it be our liquid CDs whether it be our endowment or sorry general fund we'd have to have a special meeting and that would take time is what I'm understanding right, right. so those extra steps would take time if we do approve this, those extra steps don't need to occur. Exactly. Nobody needs to come to us and ask for a special meeting to approve a certain contingent expense. Does that, does that sound? That, that's, it's, right, it's a, right. it's a contingency, exactly, you said it exactly right. And then again, because if something happens unexpected, again, and again, if it's a natural disaster or a natural event where some part of the library becomes unavailable, we're not gonna have a chance to all assemble to decide something that might need to be, where a decision needs to be more made in hours versus, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. more immediately. So, mm -hmm. it's, and as I said, and like what Trustee Rogers has said, in my experience on the board, he's obviously been on a lot longer than me, there's never been a time that I'm aware of where this appropriation contingency has been used by anybody to spend additional monies. Mm -hmm. It's always been there just just as a, as a safety net. Sure. And that's all we're doing is giving a safety net to the operation of the library. Well, no, we have used the authority right, right, to I mean, respond to well, you talked about the, uh, emergencies. Oh, right, right. I mean, patrons driving into the building is a genuine emergency. Right. But it, was, we, it, right, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't as calamitous as something it that was I was... It was a national, yeah, natural yeah, disaster. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, so what yeah. I think I'm understanding, too, from Director Johnson is that, you know, when I hear an additional 10% increase, and we, we do, we know that we have contingent funds, we know that we have the, we know we have liquid funds, um, I think that's what, I think that's what you're trying to kind of, you know, give importance to. You know, do we... Do we want that flexibility with the timing and with the contingency expense at 10%, or do we want that flexibility maybe at 
a flat rate. Is 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 that? I mean, that's. Of, I mean, that's, maybe that's part of what. I think yeah, that's pretty close. My last, just to try to make it clearer, or my my last question, comment, and the general one before I ask about the transfer is. Um, I, I don't think any of these are at all within the realm of likely. I think you know we've got a very capable staff. They're capable of managing to budget in the event of somebody hitting the front door or somebody giving us a lot of money. I think staff can handle it within budget since they have for years and years and years. But if there's a desire to have a general authorization, essentially line of credit, in the event something really bad happens and you need to spend $200,000, why don't we just have that contingency general fund of $400,000 to spend as you see fit and not up every line item by 10%? Well, so there's extra clarity and transparency. So as we're publishing this and we're not publishing our working budget, we're very clear this is what we actually intend to spend. Because well, we don't intend to spend. But our working budget is published. And, and it's confused. all up on the website. There is total transparency. So I don't... It's plus or minus 10%. All this is on the website. 